Hi there, welcome back to Diagonal Move. My name's Neil, and today we are going to attempt mission four of Rifles in the Ardennes. And the mission we are doing is tank hunters, in which we need to find and destroy a German tank that is holding ground in a critical sector of the map. The tank we're going to be facing is a Panzer Kampfenwagen IVG. I rolled on the table uh, previously during the setup and it is a relatively tough tank according to the the table up here um, but not the worst and not the easiest so perhaps a good level of difficulty given the uh, status of our last mission and uh, speaking of our last mission um, it ended with um, our machine gunner Dan alone on the top of hill 621 surrounded by enemies and under withering fire from the machine gunner in a pillbox. We, the mission timed out, all his comrades were eliminated from the game and the mission was lost. Now, part of the campaign, when you lose a mission, you, you don't, the campaign doesn't have to end. What you can do instead is you can, um, you can carry on and just treat the, the um, soldiers as you would do normally if you had won the mission. Um, however, they would count as having been eliminated. And you need to decide or, or find out what happened to them. You do lose a experience or an experience point. Um, we didn't have any because we spent them all at the start of mission three, uh, but we would have lost an experience point. Um, but we do gain one experience point for um, uh, the mission, regardless of whether they were won or lost. So our total for the campaign is now one experience point, which means we won't be able to buy any uh, skills or upgrades this turn. Um, now, what we should have done at the end of the last campaign um, was determine whether those eliminated soldiers are are wounded or dead, or whether they can rejoin their squad for this mission. And we will do that shortly, but just a quick reminder that those soldiers wounded in mission two, so Adam, Greg, and John, our light machine gunner, all now back on, on, on the squad, ready to fight for another day. Um, Dan, who was our sole survivor, but we can probably say he was eliminated. On a roll of a two, Dan is wounded. Moving on to Ed, who was a rifleman, is also wounded. Charles, who was our standing leader for the last mission, a rifleman again. He is actually dead. He is removed from the game completely. I need to cross his name off, the, off of our roster. Ben, um, who the counters are double-sided and he was a rifleman um, rather than an SMG. And he, on a roll of a one, is also dead. Fire, Hugo, a new addition to the squad during mission three. Let's see how he fared. Hugo was a submachine gunner. And on a roll of a five, he's wounded. Okay, um, Leroy here uh, was on detachment from uh, another part of the the, the, the army, or the division, um, and he does not rejoin our squad. Um, he, so he well, so let's see if he was wounded or not. Um, he was wounded, but he will not be rejoining rejoining our squad. Um, so that means three of our surviving soldiers are wounded and out of the game this turn. Um, we do have um, a uh, another soldier on detachment. This time it's Ian, who has a bazooka. Uh, the US Army's anti-tank um, representative for this game. As with the um, equipment and the grenades and so on, other armies for, for Germany and the Russians do have a wider choice than the Americans, but we have a bazooka. Now, our squad is somewhat depleted. Um, we normally have 12 army points, sorry, 10 army points for the Americans. And currently we are standing at the grand total of five. Um, six if you count the remaining grenades which means we're four army points short but we do 
and we do now get to roll to see if we have any reinforcements, but we probably will not. Um, no, on a roll of a four, we have one army point available to reinforce the squad. So let's see who's left. Can we buy anything with one army point? Um, okay, we we, can, we have a left in the in the pool. We have um, another rifleman. We have a machine gunner uh, and a couple of heavier more expensive uh, units. So I think what we'll do is we'll buy another rifleman and we'll call him Fred. So Fred is joining our roster. Um, however, we do need to remove those that were wounded. Okay, so onto the mission. Um, as before, I won't go through the rules in huge detail. Um, we do have uh, 12 turns, as mentioned before, to um, find and destroy this tank. So let's, let's get ourselves underway. Um, first phase of, of each turn is to choose the groups. I only have a grand total of five soldiers, um, and so I will apportion them. Uh, Adam with John to take benefit of the leader's ability to direct the area effect weapons fire and um, the smaller unit, uh, the larger group, sorry, with the um, assistant leader who is going to be Greg in this instance. I'll promote Greg to assistant leader having survived a previous mission. Okay, so let's roll for action points and um, get ourselves going. Okay, three dice as normal. Okay, we've ordered a six, a two, and a one. So that is just the one bonus action point. Um, and I will spend that simply to move. And we have triggered event number six. And event number six in this particular mission is going to be an enemy rifle on a building on a previous stripe and a previous stripe in this game means numerically previous rather than physically previous uh, between a rifle on a building on stripe number five that is the end of, of my turn and what we need to do now is check for enemy presence which in this mission a one roll of a one to five is nothing, and a six means we then need to roll on the patrol table. Um, on a three, we do not have any other enemies. Um, and as before, if there are one or no uh, Germans on the map, we would make a presence check. Two or more, we do not need to do so. Um, having decided what, whether there are any more any more enemies, we now need to just determine what the enemy is going to do um, and that involves rolling on some of these tables and we have a slightly different um, activation table to some of the other missions uh, one being for the tank when we find it and the other being for the, uh, the non-armoured units so let's roll on that table and on a roll of two the group will rally if there are any suppressed units, which there are not. Otherwise, it will attack the nearest target group. And same principle as before, the nearest target group at a range of one for a rifleman will be this one. We will roll to see which of our two units will be attacked. And on a roll of three for a non-armoured target, we are attacking the unit with a lower toughness number. Um, the toughness numbers are the same um, and so what I will do is I'll have a quick look to see what skills people have and Adam is our veteran um, which I believe gives a plus one die roll modifier so we will say he is the more challenging to eliminate enemy uh, or friendly and the rifle fire will fire at Adam on a roll of a two nothing happens the two plus the rifle's base combat factor of one is only three, and our toughness is six. And 
that means that we, we do not take any damage. So end of turn one. Moving into turn two. Um, roll, don't, the first thing you would do is decide whether you want to keep your groups the same if they're on the same the same stripe. Uh, even if they were, I would I would keep them the same rather than change them around at this point. And roll here, and we've got one regular action and one bonus action. If you haven't seen the original video, I'm using the uh, video for mission one. I'm using the blue cubes as the bonus actions and the grey cubes as the regular actions. Um, those orange cubes are for recon points as and when we get them. Um, the difference between all the different actions being the bonus actions can be used to uh, modify other actions as well as actions in their own right and the recon points allow a a re-roll and can be carried over between turns. Um, but we have two two actions we can do. Um, and I think what we'll do here is we will move our second group up onto the board and then I think we will fire at the um, the building uh, containing that rifleman and I think we'll do it with the um, the rifleman. No, I'm going to run a building. I would suggest using a bazooka, but the bazooka is really geared up more towards um, anti-tank, so it's not going to cause a big explosion and cause the building to collapse. So um, not really a huge difference there in, ter in terms of power against infantry so perhaps we will um, actually use the fire, the fire action on the smaller group here which has um, Adam who I've just realized is actually a, a submachine gunner uh, rather than a rifleman and uh, John now John is a uh, light machine gunner and we will use um, Adam uh, leadership ability to direct the fire of John's light machine gun um, and what that allows us to do is um, well, there's two different ways you can use it if there's more than one person in the group you can combine their scores or you you can um, add a plus one to uh, a single unit um, so it depends on whether you want to create a fire group or just buff a single unit, it, the, the slight effects are slightly different. In either case though, Adam will forego his attack. And so let's try and use the machine gun to take out the rifleman on the building on strike five. And we've rolled a, we have rolled a five. So five plus the machine gun's base factor of one plus the die roll modifier for the leader benefit gives us seven. Um, the toughness of the German machine gunner is six however he is in a building meaning we have not damaged him in this instance because the total score is, is lower sorry higher than the score that we rolled okay not as um, successful as I'd hoped and we now need to move on to that enemy presence check it is a three and on on this mission a three Three means uh, target group in range we attack, otherwise we cover. And there is two target groups in range. Now this time we need to roll on another table to decide the group that we attack. And on a roll of six, uh, the group that we attack is... Bear with me just a moment. I'm getting the, ta the tables muddled. I was looking at this one rather than this one. Um, I mean, it's okay. So we are attacking the group with the anti-tank weapon, which is this group here. And the unit that we are attacking within that group is going to be a six again. And the unit within that group is the unit with the highest combat factor. Um, and that is going to be the anti-tank weapon which has a combat factor of three against armoured vehicles. So we use the rifleman, rolls a one, plus the one of his range, of his, his combat factor, no damage. Okay, moving on to turn number three. And this is where I hope we get some more actions to get a, get a, 
get ourselves moving up that board. Um, okay. I don't want to change my groupings at the moment, so I'm just going to roll the three dice, and now we do have three actions. These are all regular actions, so we can't apply any bonus, bonus action buffs to them. But what we can do is move the first unit, or the first group, revealing event number four, which is nothing. Uh, there's no event in this mission for, for uh, event token four. Um, and we will now attack. Um, and we will attack with um, Adam first. Um, we won't apply his leadership buff because his submachine gun has, machine gun has a base combat factor of three. So let's see if we can't damage that rifleman. And no, with a roll of two, we we cannot do that. Um, and so now we attack with John. Roll of a four. No, we have the same the same problem. Okay, final action. I think I would like to try and find that uh, that tank sooner rather than later, so we know what we're looking at in terms of uh, enemy. Um, however, the tanks um, do have a substantial range compared to some of the other weapons. Um, their range being two stripes was everything else, with the exception of the machine gunner and the bazooka is is one stripe. The other the machine gunner and the bazooka have two stripes as well. Hmm. Okay, what to do? Um, the other option of course would be to simply attack with these guys. Um, try and clear out that But it's not actually possible to do without without having the buffed combat factors. So I will use them to simply move onto the same stripe as the others. So enemy presence check. On a four, there is no additional enemies, or there are no additional enemies. Uh, Rifleman B on the German side will now attack the larger group, which is again uh, the group of Greg. Ian and Fred, and he will attack. Uh, Rifleman B will attack uh, Ian again, unsurprisingly, perhaps. So, a roll of a six plus his one it means that Ian is now suppressed, um, meaning, of course, that one more hit and Ian, Ian is dead, which um, raises all manner of potential problems if that does happen. So we need to have a good think about what we're going to do. Uh, move to turn four. Groupings I will keep the same. Just one action. We've got two twos, both of which are discarded. Just one action. And I think I will attempt that recovery action for Ian. So don't really fancy trying to take on a tank without him. Um, and recovery action is going to be a plus three. I don't believe. I don't believe we need the leader, although I'm thinking that maybe we do, unless we have a bonus action point to spend, which we don't. Yeah, the presence of a leader is rather important to a recovery attempt because uh, without a leader in the group, we need to spend a bonus action, not a regular action point, in order to make that attempt. And our leader, Adam, is in a different group to Ian, our wounded soldier. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to spend the action point to try and kill that rifleman and hopefully prevent any kind of um, early end to this mission or early catastrophic turn of this mission. Um, now, the the best thing I think I can do here is use the grenade that um, Adam has in support of his submachine gun, which will mean he will get to um, add a plus one to his modifier. Um, and I've just realised that Adam is a veteran as well, so that means we can add another 
plus one. Um, so that'll tell you a total base combat factor of five with the grenade, which should be should be enough, I would hope, to um, do the damage needed to at least suppress that that rifleman. And a roll of a four plus the five. That's fantastic. We have got over the the required number to um, suppress the enemy rifleman, which should I hope. Um, be enough to force a recovery attempt rather than an attack. Uh, but we'll see because the first thing we do is now move to a enemy presence check. And on that roll of a six, we do now need to roll on the patrol table here to determine how many enemies we are now facing. And on a roll of one, the patrol table tells us that we have a oh, an enemy rifle on a previous stripe which means the enemy rifle is coming to be here um that is unfortunate um so now we're going to have to deal with two enemy riflemen um and i will attack with the nearest one first um and he will attack the larger group which again is going to be ian's group and we are attacking Ian. So, okay, let's see how we get on. Uh, number three, um, Ian is suppressed, so he does suffer a plus one, I think. No, I believe it's a minus one if they're suppressed. Ian being suppressed um, would suffer a minus one to any roll he makes, not to uh, an additional penalty to the, any attacks made against him. So that roll was with three there is fine. He, we don't uh, injure him further with the attack from Rifleman B. However, Rifleman E over on the next stripe will now do something and he will attack. In fact, he will attack at range, Wafra, at range one. Um, however, he will first move um, attacking the smaller groups. He's actually going to attack our, our group with Adam and John in it. And he is going to attack. Uh, he's actually going to attack the unit with the higher combat factor, which is going to be the machine gunner. Well, actually, no, that's going to be Adam, our leader. His, his machine gun, ha his submachine gun has a combat factor of three versus the light machine gun's combat factor of two. So, um... What will happen on a roll of a three uh, plus the one for the rifleman's base factor? We're okay. Adam and lives to fight another day. Now, changing those groups around, I think I will definitely swap uh, Greg for Adam and hope that we can make that recovery attempt without the need for a bonus action point. If we get any bonus action points at all, we do. Okay, so we have a bonus action and a regular action. Two is discarded. We're now on turn five, of course. Um, so the first thing that I'll do then is I will make that recovery attempt, spending my usual action. On a plus three, we, or a three plus, we uh, remove the, the suppressed marker, which is a good turn of events. And with our next um, action, we will. What will we do? Good question. Um, I think we'll just move. We need to find this tank. We're almost at the halfway point. Nowhere near finding the tank. So let's move our move our, our larger group up. And remember, with this mission, we just have to find and destroy the tank. We don't have to kill these guys. Although, of course, the longer they're there, the more damage they're likely to do to us. Um, let's see what we've got here. Uh, event number seven. Oh, wow. Event number seven is another enemy in a building on the previous stripe. Uh, that's another rifleman in a building on the previous stripe. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, hmm. That's, that's not cool. Okay. Um, three enemies on the, ta on, on the, on the board now. We do not make a presence check. But what we do is we fire now, or determine at least what is going to happen with each of these 
these three enemy uh, riflemen B are suppressed riflemen in the building. He is on a roll of three going to going to attack and the nearest target group is this group and he is going to attack the lower units with the lower toughness number um, and Greg and John are both regular units there's no skills applied to them they're not veterans and therefore they have the same the same toughness number um, and so I will say that we are attacking uh, Greg because at range zero his um, combat factor is the highest and we rolled a one no effect from Rifleman B. Rifleman E then is going to uh, he would rally but he's not suppressed so therefore he's going to attack and he's again going to attack this unit, this group and he, this time he is going to attack Greg again um, in a roll of two there's no damage Rifleman D on a roll of a six is going to advance you advance into cover um, and then you attack the nearest group which is our group with our riflemen uh, anti-tank and SMG in it and on a roll of four he is going to attack the unit with the lower toughness number um, Adam is a veteran this guy is a bazooka he has a higher toughness number than the others he's, a, he's the veteran I'm going to say this one has the lower the lower toughness number because Adam is uh, that veteran they otherwise they have the same those two units um, well before we have no damage that is um, that's cool okay moving on to turn number six groups will stay the same and this time we have two regular actions okay let's see if we can't find that tank move for the first action and we have revealed event number five event number five says reveal the event markers on stripes one and two okay we're going to find the tank now so on stripe two we have event two which is no event meaning our tank is going to be on strike number one it's going to enter the enter the um, the game in cover behind a tree uh, presumably quite a large tree um, but that is sufficient to uh, give it a, a, a bonus to its already fairly good stats remember we would have its toughness is six it has an area effect weapon of three it is a vehicle as well clearly so it's going to be using its armored armored combat factor yeah rather than its um than the base combat factor okay um what to do next um vehicles in cover ah, vehicles in cover you can spend a recon point when attacking at range zero to cancel any ter terrain effects um, and also grenades you need to make a um, basically a morale check um, to use a grenade and remember the only rifleman who has a grenade was actually um, in this group at least was actually Adam and he used this grenade earlier so we have no grenades so we are going to be very reliant on the bazooka and in fact I think what we'll do is we will move these guys now into cover themselves into the building here because that tank will now attack um, I'm sure okay so starting down here again uh, no need for an enemy presence check so rifleman B rifleman B is going to target the group here um, he is going to target uh, Greg with his submachine guns um, higher combat factor and he's done no damage. Rifleman E on a roll of two will attack again and a roll of four he will attack 
and lower toughness number. They both have the same toughness number, so we're going to say John, because his weapon has that slightly lower combat factor at this range. And the damage is a six, meaning we are suppressed again. Somewhat unfortunate. Um, Rifleman D there on the next stripe, hiding in the trees. He's rolled a one. Um, he's going to attack. He's going to attack um, John again. I rolled over four, plus one, no damage. Okay, um, what is that tank going to do? And when you fight, when we find the tank, um, we roll on the, t the enemy activation table for the tank. Same process as before, um, except of course a different table. So the tank on a roll of a two is going to attack the nearest target group in range and with a range, as I said before, of two. No cover in the way. Um, the cover on the, the board at the moment is what's known as a terrain feature rather than, a, than, the, than the terrain that affects the whole stripe. And so there's no blocking of line of sight or anything going on at the moment. Um, but that tank is going to attack. Um, basically he's going to attack the whole group because he's got an area effect weapon. Um, so um, the first unit he will attack is going to be um, the unit with the higher combat factor, which is going to be our bazooka. See what happens. Roll of one, the uh, armoured base combat factor is three, so that's a four. We're okay. Um, next unit in that group he will attack is going to be um, the lowest toughness number, which is going to be Fred there. And a roll of a six. Um, Despite the cover bonus there of a two, uh, Fred is suppressed. And then finally, Adam will be affected by that uh, tank attack. Five plus three again, he is also suppressed, even though he's a veteran. Um, he, he suffers just like the rest of them. Okay. Moving on to turn number seven. The groups will stay as they are. We have a bonus action point and a regular action point. Hmm. I think we are going to uh, going to have to. Um, Going to have to fire at that tank with our bazooka having a base combat factor of three. We can damage the tank because even behind cover, it's only got a base of seven. Um, but what I may do is I may use Adam's leadership to um, give that plus one buff as well. So we're looking at a base four plus whatever we roll against that tank. Okay, let's go. Roll a three, so that is seven. We have hit the tank. Um, now vehicles have a slightly different way of being damaged. We have a successful attack. Instead of automatically placing a suppressed marker, we roll a d6. On a roll of a one, the vehicle is suppressed. On any other roll, the vehicle is destroyed, the target is destroyed. So, unless we're quite unlucky, we may have just won this mission. Oh, just, just, tank is dead. Our mission is a success. We do not need to worry about the other guys uh, in terms of the other German soldiers there. All we had to do was destroy the tank holding the enemy sector. The mission is complete on turn seven. Very lucky die roll there at the end. Um, I don't know how much longer we would have lasted without that stroke of luck, but 
must have hit a fuel pipe or something. Anywho, what we need to do now is to um, determine the effects of the end of mi end of mission uh, tidy up. And so, at the end of the mission, we need to um, recover any wounded soldiers, which is going to be these guys over here. They're okay for next time. Next mission, we are also going to roll that d6 for any eliminated unit in the current mission. We had no casualties, which was um, quite surprising, actually. No casualties against that tank. Um, and then we do also uh, now work out experience points and so on and so forth. So we get, we get um, at least one experience point, but we do need to roll uh, a d6. Which is a five. So we have five experience points to spend. Six if you count when we count the one from before. So what we could do is we can promote a few people or we could give them a skill. Now some of these skills are awesome. I quite like the look of this heroic morale. Automatically remove a suppressed marker from a unit when activated. Always pass the check when using a grenade against a vehicle. That sounds good. I think we'll do that. Who shall we give that to? Um, I think we will give that to... Uh, I think we'll give that to Greg. Unless Greg is already a... No, Greg does not have a skill at the moment, so Greg will have heroic morale. At a cost of two. Um, um, local contacts. I like local contacts. We can start the mission with one RP and we'll give that one to Hugo. Ed does not have a skill at the moment. Um, so we will give Ed the um, close combat, which is plus one combat factor at the range of zero. Okay, that's us done for the mission. We, we, we do not have Ian next mission, I don't believe. We will be sending him back to his home, his home unit. Um, but we do have quite a good number of troops. We have um, Adam, John, Fred, Greg, Dan, Ed, and Hugo. Um, making up our squad so we're in a good strong position for the next mission and that next mission is going to require all our strength and tenacity because we are hunting for snipers and that is going to be a challenge but we will find out what happens next time uh, thank you for joining me once again and um, i'll see you for mission five